First of all, who are you? Ah, do you want the normal answer or do you want the philosophical one? I reached that point in my career where I wasn't learning anything new. It was basically just wash, rinse, repeat. So being able to enter a new emerging industry is just so interesting and powerful. It's very difficult to explain to people that don't know the industry. Now, luckily, that's changed dramatically over the last year. The industry's practically gone mainstream. It's a marriage of technology, incentives, economics. It's actually a new paradigm. Every other chain in the industry, practically, is more of an experiment. It's almost as if they've launched their beta. Cardano has taken its time. It's not do things quickly and break things. It's take your time and do it right. It's the classic tortoise and hare. The possibilities that our competitors, or colleagues, let's call them better, have shown will now be available in a more robust and rigorous system. And therefore, it's naturally that demand is going to show up on the Cardano platform. So up until now, we've been able to get traction on our layer two solutions. But right now we have the programmatics where you can program the logic of what you're doing into the base layer. And this basically opens up the world, essentially. There's many, many more use cases that can come onto the system right now because of the smart contract capability. The legacy systems are largely centralized systems. So they're, they've, they've got the fundamental failures are in the way that they're designed. It's a top-down system. And they're not sufficient bottom-up systems anymore to combat that. If you look back at history, there was an artisanal class, right? There were people that can have small businesses and create value and actually get that value back. That was historically the case. The Industrial Revolution completely put that on top of its head, where big central corporation industrial uh, complexes were the ones that were calling the shots, and the little guy was just put into a box. What the blockchain allows is to bring that artisanal kind of small business individual enterprise back into the fold because you have a new system that allows that. So a good example could be an artist in Pakistan in the past would have to work through a system to get there and probably wouldn't get noticed. Now you could just put your, your, your art online, you can put an NFT out there and get paid for that art. That's completely new. when you're working with high assurance industries like the healthcare industry, like the financial services industry, automotive and so forth, they don't have any tolerance for, for errors and mistakes. So you need that type of rigor, you need that high assurance, that determinism, if you're gonna get those types of systems onto the blockchain. If we look at our pipeline, I have between 400 and 1,000 opportunities across the planet. So whereas demand generation in traditional space is hard to do, here comes like almost part of the part of the package. In terms of partnerships and people we'd like to collaborate with us, it really goes across the spectrum. So there's individuals starting new businesses, creating new solutions, up to small and medium businesses that are creating business value through this platform, all the way up to large governments and enterprise. By and large, partnerships are quite transactional. It's about money in, money out. When you work for a company like Input Output, you're not only working for a company, you're already plugged into an ecosystem. So there's a large community. Most companies try to do innovation in-house. Things like Catalyst allow you to crowdsource innovation, which multiplies the power of innovation. Of course, I'm the chief commercial officer, so my primary role is to bring value to input output using the Cardano platform. But the projects that really get me out of bed are the impact programs, because we're helping people that are being left out of the system. So stateless people, people in poor countries don't have access to services. It may or may not have a commercial aspect to it, but it's providing good to the world. A lot of the things we do may seem invisible or may seem small, but over time, we find that some of these small things will go to be very, very big things. So things like interoperability between chains, things like standardizations, things like uh, educating the politicians about uh, you know, our, our industry. Right now, it feels like small things. It's just some time in your day where you do this. But over time, that accumulates. And I think that'll, that'll have an outsized impact, not only for us, but for the industry at large. Seeing it around the corners in this industry is exceedingly difficult because it changes so quickly. So I think some of the big drivers like economic identity and innovation platforms and governance, those are timeless 
kind of topics. But understanding what the next big trend is going to be in the market is exceedingly difficult to do. So it's as much about being agile and flexible than being far-seeing. So the far-seeing stuff are those big topics, but you also have to be agile and keep up with the incredible change that this market is bringing. Some of the changes we can't foresee, so you have to just keep your pulse on what's going on to be able to capture those. So Cardano 2025 for me is really a story of utility, adoption, and reinvention. So we're targeting and we have line of sight to get to a billion users within that time frame. There'll be more enterprise adoption, there'll be more governance coming on board, more people coming on board. But what I'm most excited about is the unknown unknown. So what is gonna come out of this that we could not have foreseen and how do we pivot to capture that those next waves of value? So the reinvention part of it, I think is gonna be a great part of the Cardano 2025. So we do have a long way to go, but it is like being in the first days of the internet. These are things that are changing the world. In fact, the blockchain space, it's creating a new paradigm that we haven't seen since the Middle Ages. It's a new way of doing business. It's a new way of, it's, it's a reinvention of money. It's like look, going through the looking glass. It, and I, I look at traditional institutions and I see them differently because I see how the, the threads of power are working and how our industry looking to disrupt that and how many times it's adversarial where it doesn't have to be. And it's just, yeah, it's like Alice in Wonderland, right? It's like getting into this new world of, of opportunity that wasn't possible before. I've been in the industry now for two years. I've never learned so much. I've never worked so hard and been so satisfied with the work that I've done.